Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome back. The inventory shows have returned and we are starting our day with watches. New company name, old email. I am still team also at thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, or sell. I should mention the holidays are coming up. We sell what we buy, we buy what we sell, and we are looking to build inventory. So you can buy a watch or you can sell us a watch. One watch or an entire collection. No upper limit on value paid. We pay cash, we pay fast, we make the process a no-brainer. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com. All right, one of the best values year in, year out in the Sports watch category, at least at the top of the market, the Vacheron Constantin Overseas, first launched in 1996 as an update of York High 6 1977-222 sports watch. Now in 2004, it got its second generation, and the second generation proved to be the first that would offer a dual time. It launched in 2006. What we have here is a now famous model launch from 2010, the Deep Stream Dual Time, so-called, because that was the nickname of this model during development. Not the Dual Time specifically, that had come out on a steel model in 2006. Deep Stream Dual Time is the combination of the Dual Time with steel case and this anthracite titanium bezel. Now it's a 42 millimeter watch with a JLC automatic dual time base. It is based on their geographic complication. You can see we have two independent time zones. One at center represents low local time. The other at the bottom with its own little AM PM indicator represents your reference time. Whereas the JLC version of this movement has a little dimple style adjuster that requires a tool for the date. This one has a little push button that allows you to do it in integral fashion. And then there's a power reserve indicator for the 40 hour automatic winding power reserve. Now flip it all over. You can see the overseas has always been defined by its tonneau like case profile. We have the image of the Italian naval training vessel, Americo Vespucci, often considered to be the most beautiful square rigged ship in the world. And then under that, there's a soft iron cage around the movement. So not only do we have an exquisite JLC movement inside, but it's protected up to 25,000 ampere per meter of magnetic flux density and 150 meters water resistant, meaning if you put this on Vacheron's factory aftermarket, strap options, there are both, there's aftermarket and there's factory. You can swim with this watch properly. Vacheron makes a rubber strap, the aftermarket makes rubber straps, and regardless of which strap you use, fit with this watch is really excellent, because you can see how the lugs are sharply downturned. That helps it to wrap well around the wrist. It's a very thin watch, 12 millimeters thick. It'll slide under a cuff because it has a generously sloped bezel. We'll do a quick loom shot so you can get a sense of the watch in the dark. While the dual time capabilities don't glow, the conventional time is readily apparent, even at an arm's length. This is what I call all night loom. This watch has not all due. Speaking of Vacheron, it's worth noting that for most of its first quarter millennium, Vacheron was not a movement manufacturer, it was an établisseur. It would order parts from the best suppliers, specify the design parameters, bring them in-house, finish, tune, assemble, and brand them. And so that is what an établisseur is. And really, until the 21st century, Vacheron was that at the highest level. By means of the établissage practice, it became part of the Holy Trinity because of its uncompromising standards in fit finish materials and the suppliers with which it chose to work. Which is why I was confused when the 56 collection came out in 2019 and people said this, the 56 self-winding, is less of a Vacheron because it does not have a manufacture movement. Well, these people are either snobs or, and or, ignorant of Vacheron history because the movement used here, which is the same as the Cartier 1904MC, this is a movement brought in from Wolf Lurier, which is Richemont's development house for movements that stands separate from its individual brands. So this movement was originally created with Cartier in mind, and now in a higher state of finish, it does business as the 56 self-winding automatic. And you can see here between the stripes, the engine turning, the beveling, the solarization of the barrels, the black polishing of the screws, and this exquisitely hand-finished rotor, this is a gorgeous high horology movement that's durable, rugged, accurate, all of these things, and it includes one feature commonly missing on high horology manufacture movements, which is stop seconds. This is a fantastically accurate, reliable, serviceable, 
and durable movement that perfectly fits the everyday ready image of the 56, which is based loosely on the 1956 reference 6073. Now, the only part of the watch that really can be said to be inspired by the 73 is this little lug profile where you can see there's a bit of a chevron atop each lug hood. The rest of this is very much a modern watch. It's definitely not in the mold of the historique collection where the watches are very much vintage reissues. This is vintage inspired, but it's a modern watch. Well loomed, full steel, full bracelet, an unconventional way to spec this watch. This is almost always on a strap. 40 millimeters, you can see it fits beautifully. And this is really a watch that cuts the heart and soul of what Vacheron has been for most of its history, dating back to 1755. A timepiece that is simply graceful in every respect, thin enough to fit underneath the cuff, and yet loomed automatic full steel and full bracelet, everything up to but not including swimming. For that, you have the overseas. This is a fantastic modern Vacheron. Speaking of Vacheron, we're sort of running the table to start off. Here is an exceptionally rare piece. Now, this is the Japan 100. It is the traditionnel, and you know it is because it has Dauphine hands. Patrimony would be baton hands. There's a sensational anthracite rose lathe turned guilloche dial, white gold hands, half frosted for better contrast, individual applique white gold indices, twinkling and faceted like cut gems. And then we have a very discreet signature at the top, Japan 100 years. This was created for the Japanese domestic market in 75 pieces, and it celebrated 100 years of Vacheron in Japan. You can see on the reverse side, little signature, 75 pieces, caliber 4400, traditionally beautiful. It's packed with fine finish. And you can see Geneva Hallmark on both movement and case, because since 2012, it's been a full watch standard, not just movement finish. So take a quick look. Manual wind, 65 hour power reserve, chronometer style, five position adjustment, big, broad, beautifully manually finished bevels with one, two, three sharp interior angles where bevels converge and increase, solarized barrel, stripes perfectly aligned with a lovely shading gradient from side to side, satination on the wheels, black polishing on the screws. Take a look at the solarization of the crown wheel core. See how it's off-center? It's centered over the inboard screw. Little pieces of attention to detail like that are special. Things like beveling the jewel and screw sinks. This is a gorgeous watch inside and out. And with that deep, powerful anthracite dial, 38 millimeter case, white gold construction with gorgeous case sculpting. This is a very special watch. This represents what Vacheron is today. Both Traditionally beautiful and keyed into its history, but also a true movement manufacturer. This is Vacheron's watch inside and out. You know how much I love quirky independent brands? They don't come much quirkier than Resents. Now, the watch that we have here is based on the Type 5 diver, but it's not quite a Type 5. It is a Type 5, but it's the Type 5X. And while it does have unidirectional rotating bezel that can be used as a dive timer, and it is an ISO 6425 compliant dive watch, what you're actually looking at here is the Type 5X for Automobili Amos. So Eugenio Amos, he's a race car driver and car enthusiast who's created the Automobili Amos brand and the Lancia Delta Futurista. And it is a resto mod of the Lancia Delta HF Integrale Evolucione of the late 80s and early 90s. And so this watch features a scale that shows you the warm up period and the cool down period for a vintage turbocharged engine. And you can line up with the minute hand just like this. And now if I'm stopping after having my fun with my car, you can see I've got a 10 minute cool down. And if I'm about to drive in earnest, you can see from startup, which is the S, to the R, which is race, I've got 15 minutes of warm-up time. Now, as you can see, because this bezel only turns in one direction, and it is calibrated all the way around, it's still useful for diving. And you'll find that, as with most Resonance watches, the loom is absolutely stunning. And it's a regulator, as we have separate hours, minutes, and seconds, along with a temperature gauge. But the watch features seven internal bellows. So the 37.5 milliliters 
of oil inside the dial are allowed to expand and contract via those seven bellows. Now, because the oil has the same index of refraction as the crystal, you can view the time and the indications of the dial with no distortion from any angle. Also, because Resonance watches are set using their case back, you can move the case back, and in theory, you could move the minute hand. So the minute hand shouldn't be able to extend your dive, and the bezel shouldn't be able to extend your dive. So it was necessary to make both bezel and minute hand unidirectional. So we'll zoom out a little bit. Once you set this watch, and you set it by turning the case back, but once you've set this watch, you lock the setting mechanism so you can't accidentally move, oh, pardon me, that's set up right there, lock, just like that. Now you can't accidentally move it. See how I'm aggressing against the reverse side and the time's not changing? That's because the lock is engaged. Now you can see that there's individual numbering. They made only 40 of these. This was part of the recent 10th anniversary celebration, so there were several X variants. That little hourglass symbol is actually replacing the Arabic numeral 10. That's a little Roman numeral X that's been made to look like an hourglass. And you can see on the back the Automobili Amos signature and the symbol of Resonance, which is the hand. 100 meters water resistant. This is the only Resonance watch that you can actually take swimming. And it comes with two straps, one in rubber for the water and one in brown Alcantara, which is a super high-end synthetic suede that's used on the touch points of high-performance cars like seats, shift knobs, and steering wheels. It's also an upmarket option generally if you want to upgrade the headliner on something like a 7 Series or an S-Class. So this comes with that second Alcantara strap. Well, it is a 46 millimeter watch. It's not as big as you might think because about 52.9 millimeters lug to lug. The case is barely there. Yes, it's theoretically a titanium watch, but almost the whole case is sapphire. And because the module, the Resonance Orbital Convex System and its 142 parts, completely bathed in oil and self-lubricating, the only part of the watch that ever needs to be serviced when it goes in for service is the ETA 2824 base. So the module is basically sealed. People ask how reliable are these extremely, because the only serviceable part of the watch is an ETA base that anyone anywhere can service. So this is the Resonance Type 5X. This came out in 2020. I love Gerald Genta watches. Not necessarily those designed by Genta, but those that are branded Gerald Genta. Now, he left in the 1990s. By the mid-90s, he was effectively out. By the late 90s, he was officially out. And the company continued to plug away, playing on themes that he'd established during his career. And it wasn't until 2010 when its owner, Bulgari, which had bought it in 2000, decided to fold the Gerald Genta brand into Bulgari itself. And that's how Bulgari acquired the Octo design. But for two years, from 2010 to 2011, the watches were co-branded Bulgari and Genta. What we have here is one of the last licks, a final flourish from the mid-2000s, a Gerald Genta branded Arena by Retro Sport, 45 millimeters in titanium grade 5. The watch is 100 meters water resistant, and it is a sports watch, make no mistake, featuring a formidable luminescence and a by retrograde dial. It includes two patents for the retrograding jump hour system. So you can see there's a smoked sapphire over the dial, so the succeeding hour will jump into place pre-activated and loomed and the retrograde for the minutes is instantaneous and snappy it is a cool look that is inspired by automotive dashboards of the mid 20th century and then we have a lot of color we've got white we've got black we've got red we've got yellow and then a little retrograding date down at the bottom there's a pusher on the side which you can use to jump the hour without changing the minute and because the base is a Gerard Perigo 3300 we still have the underlying stop seconds function, as well as the quick set for the date. Now the watch has a full bracelet, which is rarely seen on these, and gives it even more sports watch street cred, as the bracelet won't turn to crud when exposed to salt water or sweat. On the reverse side, we have the GG7723 movement, and this is a Gerard Perigo 3300. You can see it's been treated with pale gold gilding and what they call a potter's gold or old gold. The bevels are outstanding. The GP base movement is high horology, and it's finished to an exceptional standard by Gerald Genta. The engine turning is on the rotor, the bridges, and the plates. All screw heads are black polished. Look at the size of some of this polished beveling. A 45 hour power reserve, four hertz beat rate, 27 joules, chronometer style, five position adjustment, gorgeous solarization on the barrel, 
and it is a Gerald Genta manufacturer module with the double rich grade and the jump hour on the dial side. So there is a lot of manufacturer watchmaking taking place here. On the wrist, it's big, but it's not too big. I could wear this, but I think if your wrist is any smaller than mine, you're going to want to go with one of the smaller Arena Sport models. It is not, however, very thick. Being under 13 millimeters thick, it'll slide under a cuff. Just a lot of fun, exuberant, and well-priced for a high horology watch from a brand that's actually coming back as Bulgari retroactively has understood its error, and it is bringing back both Gerald Genta and Daniel Rott. Speaking of unconventional sports watches, here is one from Debatun. Now, quick note, there is a little sticker over the dial, so if you're wondering why there are little bubbles of air, it's because there's a sticker over this watch. And we're trying to keep it in great condition because there's only one like it in the world. This DB22 Power Reserve is the original factory prototype. So while 39 were built with this combination of rose gold case and blue dial, this is the only one that was never intended for public sale. And in spite of that, you can see the fit finish, the materials, even the detailing of the movement was production ready. There's no loss of quality for its prototype status, but there is exceptional exclusivity. This is a brass ring collector's piece for connoisseurs of important modern independence. Now, the watch has a sprung rotor system, so we have a platinum mass on a titanium lever arm, and then because Denis Flageolet, the watchmaking lead and co-founder of Debitune, he wanted the longest possible lever arm for his debut automatic system, which is what this is, the caliber 2024, but he didn't want the danger that comes of torquing, so rotational motion and polar moment or turning force is desirable, but with a long lever arm, a big rotor that's broad, you get this torquing across the center, and the mass is platinum for winding efficiency, so there needed to be a way to construct and control all this. So there are four cantilever springs, and they prevent the center of the rotor from torquing in a way it's not supposed to laterally like this. And so in order to minimize friction between the titanium lever arm or rotor and the springs, each one is inset with three jewels. We also have, in addition to the shock protection for the rotor, one, two, three shock protection springs. This is a version of the triple parachute shock protection that is only featured on the automatics. Two barrels, six days of power reserve. You could see we have a balance of Denny's own design, and you could see that it features a non-annular design, almost like two yokes or two double-sided battle axes. See how it's not a ring? There's that little bulb of, of platinum. There we go. Now it's oscillating. You can see it more easily. The actual rotor, if you want to call it that, because it's not a wheel, is made of blued titanium. Then it has platinum masses outboard for maximizing the mass that's in the balance rim, reducing the effects of temperature change on timing, and reducing the effects of aerodynamics. There have been 10 de Batoon balance designs. Denis keeps going through them because he continues to update. But if you have one of the old ones, for God's sakes, do not update it when the watch goes back for service. This was one of the earliest examples. It deserves to stay as a historical document. Fit finish is uncompromising. Water resistance is over 100 meters. This was de Batoon's first sports watch family, as the DB20 series features screw-down crowns on the dial, micro light engraving. This is not rosette guilloche, which wouldn't have looked right on a watch like this. This is a very fine concentric engraving on a blued titanium base. You can see little fixing screws in blued titanium and a metallic race, a uh, modern version of a sector dial for reading the minutes and the hours, and then a power reserve indicator that turns from red to black as the watch is energized. It's a big watch, make no mistake. At 48 millimeters, it's extremely broad, so you do need a wrist larger than mine. I would recommend a 17 centimeter circumference wrist. It's thin though, with only 12.4 millimeters thick. If you've got a wrist big enough, it will slide under your cuff. A very special piece from Debatune and a rare opportunity. Now, you know how much I love Jager Le Coult. While I'm no longer a prolific collector of the brand, I should say that this is a version of a watch I owned. I owned this Master Compressor Extreme World Alarm in its Tides of Time guise. And then this one right here was launched as the standard model in 2007. It was JLC's answer to the oversized sports watch craze of the 2000s. But unlike a lot of others who cynically just made big watches with low feature content, customer calibers, and little originality. JLC did everything its own way, starting with a two-part case, steel external case, titanium internal. The internal case is on shock absorbers, so you can do ungodly shock-intensive 
activities when wearing this watch. Motorcycling, firearms, golf, tennis. JLC subjected this watch to all of those during the development. We have the compressor crowns. One half turn, now you've got 100 meters water resistance. One half turn, now you can set your watch. The alarm with the digital setting system that allows you to set the watch precisely. Note in one direction, quick set. In the other direction, there's a twin scroll concentric scale that makes it easy to set this alarm to the minute. Far better resolution than you will find on most alarm watches. And it has a hanging gong inside the case, which makes for superb volume of sound and sustain. Let me see if I can fire this one up. See how it has an on-off trigger, just like that? That's the missing piece of the puzzle. Hmm. Maybe I need to wind the alarm. Maybe that's the problem here. But it has a nice loud alarm that's one of the best I've heard in the business. So let's see. Let's see if we can fire it up now that I've wound it a little bit. Now, I owned this watch, and I can tell you that having owned this watch... It is an alarm that can wake you up, which is always important to me. In fact, just to make this easier, let's set exactly two o'clock. And you've got that on-off toggle. You put your current city of reference down at the bottom. Let's say I'm in Rio de Janeiro. And now, as I change my local time, you can see the Louis Coche World Time System features a counterclockwise rotating world time reference ring. The watch does feature a ton of luminescence. And it features a quick release system for the strap. And it's a standard 22 millimeter strap. Because of the way the quick release system is integrated, it simply withdraws around the spring bar so you can put any 22 millimeter standard strap in there so you get the best of a quick release system without being locked into some sort of proprietary JLC strap. Now I'm going to put the strap back on the case right now and show you how this watch fits on the wrist. It's big but I happily wore mine for a number of years. While it's large it's comfortable, and being half titanium, it's not as heavy as you might think. This is an extraordinary watch from a company that left it all on the field, designing its 2000-style oversized sports watch. All right. Beauvais. We don't talk about Beauvais much. Watch is made in a castle in Moitié, Switzerland, run by the King Pascal Raffi, formerly a lawyer who became a pharmaceutical entrepreneur. Raffi purchased multiple different companies, including dial makers, case makers, movement makers, and of course, Beauvais itself. And what we have here is the Monsieur de Millet. This is the Recital 12. It has a seven-day power reserve, courtesy of the Virtuoso 2 movement, which truly is finished to virtuoso standards. A dial side tri-spoke representing the seconds. You can see it even features a stop seconds function, so you can set it to a reference time. Power reserve indicator, 42 millimeter, white gold case, super thin. This is one of the thinnest Beauvais models ever constructed in the modern era. Beauvais making about 1,500 watches a year. Outstanding exclusivity from a company that has no advertising and needs none. One of the truly great independents with finish second to none and innovations unlike any other, multiply awarded at the GPHG, and this watch is emblematic of everything Beauvais does so well. And by the way, again, seven-day power reserve. And now we have an all-timer. The last and greatest of the regular production Patek Philippe 5070 chronographs. This is the 5070 P in platinum, 42 millimeters in diameter. This followed the yellow, white, and rose gold models. And this was only made from 2008 to 2009, uh, sort of spanning two model years, but only adding up to about 12 months of total production. Whereas about 250 of the yellow, white, and rose gold models were made, it's estimated that no more than 100 to 150 of the platinum model exist. Because it is a platinum Patek Philippe, you can see it as the diamond between between the lugs. The lugs are wonderfully intact. As you can see how sharp the fluting is, this is what you always look for to see whether these watches have been unsympathetically or unprofessionally refinished. You can also see the facets of the stacked pagoda style dial, or I should say bezel, external to the dial. And then we have the concentric rings circling the center dial with leaf hands, white gold Arabic numerals, and on the back, the CH2770 movement. 
heavily modified from the Lemania 2320 base. It features 60 hours of power reserve, a free sprung Gyromax style balance, Geneva Hallmark finish, 2.5 hertz beat rate, overcoil hairspring, 24 pivot jewels, and the classically beautiful column wheel lateral clutch chronograph with world-class feel and a traditional Geneva capped style column wheel. The watch comes with a full platinum clasp to match. And let me just get as close as I can to this movement. You can see how truly beautiful it is. The beveling, the stripes, the engine turning, the black polish, all of it with a profusion of different effects on different surfaces and different materials. This is as good as good gets. No, this is great. And on the wrist, you can see it wears well, though 42 millimeters in diameter and huge for a Patek dress watch. You can see that the lugs are actually really short across the wrist. So even if your wrist is as small as 14 centimeters circumference, you can wear this watch well. And it's super flat flush and easily slides underneath the cuff. This is an old timer. This was the first water resistant chronograph made by Patek since the phase out of the 1463 in the late 60s and introduced in 1998 in yellow gold. It only had a short run in any given metal. Of those metals, this is the scarcest and the most sought. If you love this or any of the watches you saw on today's show, please reach out to me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.